Today, I want to talk to you about a new learning platform we'll be using called Seesaw. The two main reasons that I would like to shift to this platform from the emails that I've been sending you are that I'd like to increase student independence and accountability. So you'll see once we get into the program that it allows me to see a lot more student work than what I could see before. And um, that allows me to assess the work and then also communicate with the students um, based on what I think they need to work more on or what they're doing well. So to start Seesaw, you'll go to app.seesaw.me and obviously as a student, you'll click I'm a student or the child will click that. And then I am not going to have them sign in with an email address because first graders don't have email addresses, of course. Um, each kid will have a unique code, which is a bunch of letters um, that I will give to you. And that, that also comes with a QR code that they could scan if they choose to, if they're using like a device like a tablet or a phone or something. Um, so that is how we will be signing in. So I've got my unique code right here. And I am signing in as Molly, that's the name of my dog. So this is just a sample student. And if Molly the student comes to this um, page, this is the first thing she'll see. And she'll see all the assignments that I have given to the class for the day. So here you can see we've got Spelling City today. We've got morning work and phonics packet to work on. We've got an everyday math video to watch. We've got um, Giraffe Problems, which is a book that we'll be focusing on this week. And we've got Writer's Workshop and a video here. Um, so this is kind of nice because I think it allows the kids to see all of the work that they have to complete. And then really they can complete it in any order they want. Um, you are still welcome to follow the schedule that I had passed out or that I had been sending out every day in email. Um, but you know, if a student is working on this by themselves, maybe they want to go in a different order and get things done and that's okay. A cool thing about these assignments is that um, I can click on it if I want or I don't have to as the student, but if I'm looking at these instructions and I just can't read them, um, I have pre-recorded all of the instructions right here with my voice so we can play that. One, complete morning work 9-1. There is a tiny number up in the top left corner. Okay, so you can see that um, I'm going to read the instructions for every assignment if the child can't read them. And then um, at, for number three here, it says in the add a response section, write down what book you chose to write about on your morning work. You could also record your voice saying those words. So this is a cool feature where I can um, kind of check in to see if the child has done their morning work or their phonics packet. Even though that is a physical packet, pieces of paper at your house, um, they can respond to me by clicking on that add a response button. And it says, what book did you choose to write about in your morning work? So if I'm Molly, I'm going to come down here and click this edit note button. And I'm going to respond so that my teacher can see what book I chose to write about. So I might say I chose to write about Little House on the Prairie. And then um, click the green check mark here. I could also have clicked the record button if I didn't feel like typing out a sentence. I could record my voice as a student. Um, giving that response and then as soon as I click the green button again it ships it off to the teacher and now I can see here it's waiting for teacher approval so that part of my assignment is all finished and I can go back to the activities page and do another activity you can see that it's gone now the morning work and phonics packet section is gone from here because I completed it already um, 
maybe I want to do math next. So it says everyday math. Okay, what do the instructions say? Watch today's math lesson video. Send me a picture of your math journal when you finish. Okay, so now I know I can click on this link right here and that will take me to the math lesson video for the day. And these math lessons are the same that I've been doing, um, uploading videos on YouTube. And then when I'm ready, when I'm done with that lesson and I'm done with my math journal, I can click add a response. And it takes me to these choices of ways I can respond to my teacher. Now, the directions were to send a photo of the math journal to my teacher. So I will obviously choose photo. And if you're on an iPad, it's probably a little bit easier. Um, I'm on my desktop computer right now. So you can see here's me and I'm gonna take a photo of this math journal page that I did. So do, 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 down here. Okay, and I click check. And now again, it's waiting for teacher approval. So um, as the teacher, I can see the work in that math journal and grade it and respond to the student if I need to. Um, on the teacher page, it gives me an option to comment or like the post um, or approve the post too so that the student has pretty much immediate feedback about what work they've done. Okay, so again, I come back to activities. I can complete Spelling City or the reading um, comprehension work or writer's workshop. And then any of those things that I complete will go into my journal. So here you can see that Molly can see the work that she's done. I, again, these are waiting for teacher approval. Um, if the teacher decides to post something in the class journal, um, that would show up, well, I'm not seeing it over here, but um, if the teacher decided to show something in the class journal, that would show up over here. Students cannot see each other's work, um, but if the teacher wants uh, to share a student's work or share an example of something, that will be over here in the class journal, and um, that will only happen rarely, you know, if there's like a photo of something or whatever. I'm not trying to have kids compare their work to each other's work. So um, over here we have the inbox. I tried a couple times to get this to format correctly and it just won't, but this is the schedule that we have been working from this entire remote learning time. So um, I can send messages to the class. I can also send individual student messages and I can send family messages. So you can't see that option here because we're not on the teacher page, but um, I can communicate to you as parents and you can communicate back to me through the app. Of course, email is still a great way to communicate with me, but um, I will be checking the app as well. And then students cannot uh, send messages to each other, but I can send a message to a student and vice versa. So um, I think that this is a really good way to have students show me the work that they've been working on. Um, it's so far I have been saying show me your work when we get back to school but who knows when we'll be going back to school and um, I want to be able to interact with the students a little bit more than we have already. Um, I also think that this will increase their independence and allow them to be more in control of the assignments that they're working on. Um, hopefully they'll get the knack of logging in very quickly and then just be able to complete the assignments on their own um, after I've read the instructions to them or they've watched the video on their own or whatever it is for that assignment. So if you have any questions about Seesaw, you can let me know in our Q&A meeting um, that I've set up via Zoom. So that information will go out in the email 
um, newsletter that I've been sending out. And, um, or you can just email me if you have any questions, but we'll be rolling this out next week as a way for students to be more independent and more accountable. Thanks for watching.